looking back at this game, this press conference is also uh, looking at the Southampton game. If you do want to ask any questions, we're not doing a separate Southampton press conference, so we'll just do this in one. There won't be a separate huddle afterwards. Well, yeah, hello. How uh, frustrating that such a great performance didn't get a win because of another penalty miss at the end. Yeah, it's frustrating, of course. Uh, good save. Uh, but I think the. At a moment like this, it's better to concentrate on the performance and how well we played and to really give the players an enormous pat on the back for the level of their performance, the way they conducted themselves throughout. And if one's to be brutally honest, you know, with five or six minutes to go, I was thinking more in terms of making certain we didn't lose our point than actually going on to win it. It was an opportunity that came as a great bonus with the penalty being awarded, but as in the Bournemouth game, in a very similar situation, Wilf had done brilliantly once again to provoke it, but unfortunately we, we didn't take advantage. So maybe come the end of the season we'll look back and we'll start saying it was an enormous disappointment or enormous frustration to miss those two penalties. But after both games, I've got to say I've been more inclined to say, you know, well done, boys. That was a, a very good point, both against Bournemouth and today. There were a couple of big talking points at the end. The penalty awards and the Zaha going down and also the punch and tackle on De Bruyne. What did you make of it? <coughs> Nothing at the moment. I mean, really, I'm here to talk about the, the 95 minutes of football I watched. I'm not here to talk about incidents, which you've probably seen 15, 16 times in slow motion. I saw both incidences. Uh, incidents during the course of the game. I've got to be brutally honest with you. I was following the ball uh, when the ball ricocheted from the punch and De Bruyne a challenge, so I didn't even pay it any heed. Um, so for me, it's all about being here today, hopefully to talk about the 95 minutes and not against the two or three. I would have thought there was enough football to talk about without having to worry about the two incidents. Roy, what do you think of the defensive Well, obviously, I'm very pleased with it. I'm very proud of the performance. I thought it was a, I thought it was excellent. I thought it was excellent in terms of their, of their tactical discipline. I thought it was certainly excellent in terms of their, of their commitment and their focus and their determination, their concentration. Because you only need to fall asleep for a brief moment against teams of this quality, and they punish you with the level of player they have. So. It's an obvious answer, but the answer is I'm really, really pleased with them and I think they had to work unbelievably hard to, to get it. But that's going to be the case for any team that plays against Man City between now and the end of the season. If you, if you don't work that hard and have that tactical and defensive discipline, you're likely to concede goals. And uh, I, was, I thought before the game that our best chance of getting a result would be to score some goals because I know how good they are <laughs> offensively. But luckily, we, we kept them kept them at bay and could even have won the game with that penalty, as we've just said. As pleased as you must be, Roy, with the defence, who now got three key defenders out injured. Yeah. And so, are we a bit stretched at the back now with this game coming up? Massively, massively, yes. not, just, not just at the moment, but going forward. Because Sacco has been out now for a month, I believe, is it? And he's likely to be out for a few more weeks to come with a quite serious injury. Joel Ward is, is, is still recovering and there's no sign of him recovering in the next few days, that's for sure. And then we've lost Scott Dan, we've lost Jason Punchin, so I'm afraid that we've, we've stretched our resources to the absolute limit and that's why today I think it was so nice to see three players who've not had many chances. Jairo Riedewald, who during my time has hardly had a chance at all. Um, Patrick Van Arnholt and Tim Fossumens, who've had very few chances, if any, recently, to come in and, and do as well as they did. Uh, we will recover one or two players who are unable to play today before the Southampton game. But really, after an effort like this, you'd, you'd be happy if you could make the number of substitutions that Man City feel they can always make. When you look at the quality of the players not playing, you know we're going to be a bit limited there, as you saw from the bench that we had today. Well, 
Sorry, um, Orchard Zaha was probably your biggest attacking threat today, but um, Carl Walker seemed to contain him at certain parts. What did you make of his performance, and was it part of the plan to switch him up to the other side halfway through the game? Yeah, because of course Carl's very fast, um, as is Wilf, so there was a, an element of them neutralising each other. So we thought that after a while it would be uh, towards the, certainly towards the end of the game, especially with with Sterling coming on on, on that side, that it might be an idea to to switch them over because uh, both he and Andros are capable of playing on either wing. Um, but it was it wasn't exactly a masterstroke, you know. It's a sort of sort of tactical decision my wife could make. <laughs> well, what did you make of his performance? Wilf, yeah. very good, very very good. I mean, really, he just puts one excellent performance after another in for the team. And you know, the big question for me, I suppose, with an element of scepticism which always creeps in when you've been in football a long time, is how long can he keep this going? You know, I, you know, keep giving performances like that week after week uh, with very little break in between it's it amazes me um, for me I can only hope it for me and for Palace fans and for the club I can only hope he, he can keep it going Roy how bad is the Scott down injury? well we don't know you never know do you directly after the game the um, the doctors are loath to make any bold statements but it doesn't look good that's for sure it's a Let's put it this way, it's a serious knee injury. Um, now, how serious it will turn out to be when he has the scan, we'll have to wait and see. But it was a, a serious knee injury. Does it mean that you might move in the market for another defender in general? I've got to say that uh, at the moment we haven't been thinking along those terms. We, you know, we, we aren't a club that has uh, unlimited resources at our disposal to just, you know, whenever a player goes down, we'll jump out and buy another one. That's not where we are or who we are so the subject of buying a centre backs never come up because you know we weren't expecting to have both Mamadou Sako and and uh, Scott Dan out for long periods of time but who knows now you know there'll be there'll be discussions football is a an ever revolving subject what you think's good in your team and that you have no problems with at one moment in time suddenly another moment in time changes it also I can't answer your question, um, but it's not something we've contemplated up to now because we think that with with uh, James Tompkins, with Scott Dan, with Mamadou Sako, with Martin Kelly, with Damien Delaney, that that hasn't been our our major area of weakness. And there's been talk we might return Tim Fossey Manchester United to free up. I don't know. Any, I know nothing about that. I know nothing about that. We're very happy with Tim Fossey Manchester, so that's not. Uh, I don't know where that story comes from, to be quite honest. Boy, since the, uh, since the match finished, there's been a sort of uh, creeping feeling of the, of the, about the validity of the penalty. Well, here we go. You know. Yeah, well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. So, you know, I'll, I'll leave you to decide. I haven't seen it. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as, as I am, when players are given against us, if the referee's that close and has given the penalty, then presumably he's seen it as one, and that's it as far as I'm concerned and uh, you know you're talking to someone here who's just in his team play excellently well in the second half against Arsenal at home and then taken the first point of of Man City in 19 or 20 games you want me to discuss the validity of a penalty decision there are key issues but in that sense in a, in a, in a wider sense have you shown the rest of the Premier League that Manchester City can be stopped or used is there a sense of that in your camp this afternoon? No, I don't think so. I mean, I think the sense is that there's an element of, of being very satisfied with the performance and happy that we didn't lose this game, which you know many people predicted we would. There's also an element of frustration or, 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 or sadness that we didn't actually profit from the penalty that was awarded and, and get all three points. There's that element too. And then I think the last element is one of being aware that this is a nice moment in time. This is a, a moment we can we can savour for a very, very brief period because on Tuesday we've got to go to Southampton with only one day's rest and with a lot of injuries. So there's that element as well in our mind. Uh, uh, but you know, you'll have to allow me to some extent to at least have a few minutes of enjoyment, albeit that it might end at midnight tonight, in, in, in seeing uh, a Celeste 
seeing at Sellers Park with the fantastic crowd we have, that we've sent them home very happy today, and we ourselves go home happy because we think we've 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 made a played a very good game. I also couldn't help but notice while. De Bruyne was down and Punching was down being treated. You were sitting next to Pep Guardiola having a very pleasant chat, mm. almost like two chaps at a bus stop. Um, mm. I would say I would say two coaches, two coaches who've been in football for long enough, two coaches who understand the the nature of the game, the nature of the business, two coaches with mutual respect for each other, and two coaches who obviously took that opportunity to to say a few words to each other regarding you know, what they'd seen during the course of the game and what they, they thought about the season. Um, because you never necessarily get those opportunities that you would like to share those thoughts after matches because we spend so much time with you people. Lucky <laughs> you. <laughs> May I ask what you were discussing when you were no. discussing what would happen? No, 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 I don't, would, don't want to talk about those things. It was nice for Pep to come and and sit down. He, I know him, of course. We we have, we have met in the past in UEFA UEFA seminars, uh, but albeit very briefly. So it was just nice for him to come over and have that chat. But uh, I'm not going to tell you what he said. But he, if he wants to tell you, then he's more than welcome to do so. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, gents. Thank you. Thank you. And you too, lads.